Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brooks? Yes. Chris Long? Yes. Joel? Hart? Yes. Ogallon? Here. Parker? Here. Staley Perry? Here. Chiminello? Here. Weigel? Here. Do we have a quorum? Okay, thank you. Uh, approval of minutes, executive committee minutes from April 6th. Second. Motion second. I addition for corrections. Hearing not all in favor, aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Executive committee meeting minutes from April 13th. Second. Any additions or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Are there uh, old business? Do you have any old business? No, the right to move business. Uh, discussion of liquor license process. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this whole thing came about because of uh, you know, the intent, and I brought, went over the minutes from the meeting uh, uh, from when we discussed the liquor license. And the, it was clearly in the minutes that it was the intent of the committee that when a liquor license uh, uh, was given up, that we would that was to reduce it. Uh, uh, the resolution didn't reflect that. And I have since talked to the state's attorney's office about an automatic reduction, and that doesn't seem that it would be the prudent thing to do because of the requirements for uh, a public hearing uh, uh, it probably would not be wise to do so because we wouldn't be holding a public hearing. Which brings us to, you know, the intent, I think, was to review it when a liquor license was given up, which requires the county executive's office then to inform us that uh, uh, this is the case. So, you know, uh, Jim, I'm going to look at you for this. You do act as the <coughs> deputy liquor commissioner. Can, can, can Mike come up? Yeah, sure. Uh, I know you don't like to get in the spotlight, but come on. Uh, so, so, uh, <coughs> yeah, Jim, this could be as simple as you just let us know, and then we make a determination whether we want to reduce yeah, the classification by one license. Uh, uh, I suppose we could amend the uh, liquor uh, ordinance to the state that the, co the commission, liquor commissioner will inform us when a uh, license is given out to maybe formalize it. I don't know if it's really necessary. Uh, uh, so what's your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are probably similar. I don't think it's necessary, but you are the legislative body <laughs> of the classes, the numbers. Um, you know, the kinds of licenses you have. I've been talking with your chief of staff. In fact, we have that issue coming up presently with the former Rockwell's, the former R license uh, in the Lockwood area. Now it is in Lockwood. That license will then be available. They were annexed in the 19th. Uh, we don't have the formal documentation yet for Lockport, but I've been in touch with UC Fans, uh, the city of and they'll move forward those documents once they've been executed. You know, that's a good example, Jim. It's, it's we're giving the license up. We reduce the county, but the license is still in existence. Exactly. Uh, uh, so, so it's still in the area. Okay. And I think that, and I think that's a good point of maybe that's a good case for reducing it because the license is still there. It's just under the, another jurisdiction. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think we just, you know, well, I'm going to bring it out to the committee. Do you want to formalize it? Do we just basically uh, uh, ask the executive's office to please inform us to, so we can uh, review it, make a decision whether we want to reduce it or not? <coughs> And what classification of license was that? Uh, Rocco's was an A, um, and uh, now it's under the jurisdiction. Uh, actually, the ordinance is on like a two order over here, and technical <laughs> but um, they did annex the property, but they haven't recorded the, the documents yet. But frankly, once they got that ordinance, 
think the, the prevailing view would be it's in their jurisdiction. Right. Their police department deals with issues. Uh, they actually have an annexation agreement that covered it because, frankly, the Flacos would have volunteered to go. They were going to probably well, say they would force annex the property. And I'm sorry, I was looking for our codes. I, I don't know the difference between A and A1. Is that A1 is on premise restaurant, certain square footage, all that kind yeah. of stuff. You can, you don't have to, but you're allowed uh, you know, to serve food. Uh, the, the Rocco's, um, they serve a small amount of food, as I recall. Uh, I don't really. Uh, primary business is. is no, primary business is. No beverages. Yeah, okay. Right. okay. And, there's, and there's seven of those and 11 of the A1, so that's about 18 that are in that classification. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that makes a lot of sense to look at reducing something in that particular classification. I look at some of the other classifications, there are not that many there, just depending. I mean, we're a large county to say that we have you know, eight in the class B, where that's actually happening and, you know, could impact whether it would be reduced or not. So I kind of would lend myself, lend it to you guys coming to us and saying there's one available and what do you guys want to do with it? Yeah, I mean, we've communicated with uh, your chief of staff about the Rockos and when we get the paperwork from Lockport and Mr. Thanos, who's been very cooperative, but frankly, I have to see in the Joe Herald News, um, you know, they don't have to tell us, and frankly, with some establishments that just want a business, the ordinance requires them to <coughs> license in. If somebody's going out of business, there's no way to enforce that. So sometimes, you know, we don't find out until the year later when they're supposed to renew. Exactly, exactly, when, when we don't get a check uh, for a renewal. Um, and, and there's not much you can do about that. This case, though, um, after I saw what had happened formally uh, in the paper, I called Mr. Famous. And he provided, you know, the uh, council uh, draft ordinances and the annexation agreement, the memo that said, you know, this is part of the assemblage for Montport Square, and really, long term, they don't see that being a labor establishment, but they wanted that property to make it more attractive to a developer down the road. And the other issue is if it gets sold, if the business is sold to pass that liquor license on, it's not an no, they're not transferable. They're not transferable. No. So they would need to contact us before an establishment would open up. Right. Yeah. Because you have new owners, you have new fingerprint background checks. Uh, it's a privilege, as you say, not a right. And so they have to go through that process because we have no idea. For instance, you have a new LLC. We don't know anything about the background. So we have to make sense here. You know, work with the sheriff's office. It's very cooperative. I mean, with us, it's the deputy sheriffs that monitor the businesses. You know, we don't do that if there was an issue with the hearing. We have to act in a quasi-judicial capacity. <coughs> so we have to be somewhat objective to rely on the sheriff. The deputies are very cooperative. If you have any issues, they're very responsive. Um, but frankly, the liquor license number has gone down significantly in the last 10 years because of Excuse things like rockets annexations and liquor business is a tough business. I mean, if it wasn't for video gaming, some of these places would not be. I mean, you have five, I'm sorry, you have five classifications that don't even have numbers on the Is that because there's no licenses out there? Yeah, the, the restaurant uh, category, for instance, has no, has no license. The restaurant category does? No, they, they fit into the, the A category. They, they, these, actually, it's, it's your like ordinance, you, not we, my ordinance. I, 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 you're the we can look at classifications, you know, just to, to, just to yeah. move this along. You know, here's, the, here's my concern. I don't want the county board to be in a position where, on one hand, the county is issuing a special use on, on the land use side, and, uh, and then we say, well, you know, we're going to look at uh, reducing the license, and they think there's a license available, and there may not. Because probably, I would recommend going forward if we're not informed, and, and this comes up, uh, and they don't have the special use. Uh, we may not. We may go ahead and reduce those licenses, the, the license availability anyway. And just because they get get the special use, that doesn't mean that we're obligated. Uh, to issue them a liquor license, or it doesn't mean it doesn't mean we can't reduce those liquor licenses. 
so, and the flip side is true. If, if we increase a license, and most of the time, if anybody's done their due diligence, they'll come to the liquor commission. But if they haven't, let's just say their background check or history wouldn't qualify them in the liquor commission's eyes. There could be one available, and they could get turned down. So, so uh, uh, and I guess, and I, I, you know, that'd be one of my other concerns is that somebody would go through a, a process of getting a special use for liquor, and then not made, made being made very clear to them doesn't mean that there's going to be a license available to them, uh, and that they would have some kind of action towards the county. Uh, I wouldn't think so, but. It, it seems a little disingenuous when you say, oh, you got a special use, but not, we're not going to give you that, but there's no license available, or we're going to reduce the licenses, you know. I mean, I, I do know I've talked to Kurt, and he had some views on this, and I'm going to get to you in a second, Kurt. Uh, well, that's my concern, too. So say we have a restaurant that has a local license. It's a good restaurant. People decide to retire to pass the restaurant. <coughs> They obviously, the new owner's going to have to go through the process. But if the fact that they leave that business and that license is still here, then we got to go through a whole process just to bring the license back if, in fact, they qualify. Shouldn't it at least? Well, I, 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 yeah, well, I agree. I mean, I agree with that. If it's, if it's a business that's being sold and it's going to be a continuous, and we don't use the word transfer, but it's going to be a continuous use, it's different. I don't know if we need to make that clear. No. You know what, uh, Jim, that happens frequently yes. in terms of sales. And you know what, it, it's usually pretty seamless because, you know, people generally don't come to us for a liquor license if they have problems with their background, and, you know, because they know they're going to be fingerprinted. If they've got four felonies and, and they've got all sorts of business they issues, up. They, they have a spouse, they have somebody else do the application, not them. Um, and that hasn't been a problem, but we still have to do the due diligence, fingerprints, background checks, check out what kind of business organization, partnership, LLC. Yes, I think I think we're on the same page. Like I think Rocco's is a good test case. We're going to give that information to you. That license is going to be available. Um, you know what you want to do in terms of reducing it or not. That's a legislative decision because at the end of the day, you know it's a legislative function. Matt, Matt, let me ask the, uh, uh, the state's attorney's office. I mean, I always felt that it's going to be a, it's a continuous, even though the name may be changing, it's a continuous use of the license. There's no gap in the use of the license. One uh, uh, going from one owner to another owner. No, there is a gap. And, and at least it over. Well, I don't know if it's written it's in ours. So, so the way your ordinance is written, it, it, there is a, a legal gap. Um, they yeah. need to go back to the liquor commissioner, but right. the way it's written, that certainly can be um, granted to transfer the license. Okay, so maybe we should make that. Maybe we should make that clear. Uh, also, maybe we can take another look at how do we make that clear in our policy. I don't know if that's part of the original, but how do we? Yeah, the problem I see, you know, is that every. Applicant, even though you have X business and they've been fine, the Y business uh, buys it. Um, the liquor commission, until a background check and, and we do our due diligence, we don't know what kind of business it is. So, uh, and the state liquor code says it's not transferable. Correct. It's not a right. It's a privilege. So right. we're bound by state law. You know, we all are, and, and our ordinance pretty much mimics state law. You know, in answer to your question, Chuck. I mean, it's. You know, it goes back a ways, and I think, you know, we cleaned it up with all those, you know, excess licenses that really, the way we're developing and the way the county's developing, you know, it's shrinking, smaller. you know, rather, and so there was no need to have those excess licenses in, in those categories. I, I think uh, you will understand, the Liquor Commissioner will understand. You, you know what we're referring to. The license is actually no longer, uh, or the establishment is no longer going to be in business for an extended period of time. You know, uh, yeah, they, 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 they can't function. They can't find a buyer. That's something that we have to be communicating uh, with the <coughs> office on to make sure 
that you know that you have some discretion as to what you want to do. Yeah, I just wanted to get back to initially when we were discussing whether we should uh, add the language to the ordinance. I would be in favor of that. Uh, you know, this board today is here in this discussion and we understand it. You say you reviewed the minutes from the initial meeting when we were putting the resolution together. It didn't reflect what you thought was the intent. Uh, and so I'd like to actually add it to the ordinance okay. so that we, we, we can, we can do that. I, I tend to agree. And, and uh, so, Reagan, yeah, well, I think what we'll do is uh, we'll amend the ordinance to reflect if the executive's office will disinform us. And even on the, even on the, when the business is being sold, you can inform us. We'll just say, okay, this is going to another owner. We're not, we're not going to reduce it. I mean, it's that simple. That is far as I There's no so. problem with that. So you would just tell us that it's, there's, there's going to be a change in ownership of the business, and a new person will be getting uh, applied for a liquor license, in which case the intent of the board would not be to reduce the number of licenses. We just want to reduce the number of licenses, or at least consider reducing a license if the actual business has been gone for an extended period of time. Yeah. Uh, quick, quick question. It's just been closed. It's not for sale or anything. It's right. Closed. Quick question, though. Do we want to identify specific classifications that would just automatically go through that in the transfer business? Or kind of to your point, there are certain areas within the county where a sale of liquor, there seems to be a lot of certain kinds of businesses. And I'm not so, I mean, we're, we're having a discussion that's blanketed versus specifically looking at, I, you know, and I'm just so I'm throwing that out as a I, question. I don't think we need to look at the classifications because when the, when the executive's office brings it to us, when the liquor commission brings it to us, we, we'll have a discussion. We'll see what the classification is. But we're just saying if, if it's a one move from one to another, then we're done. So we're, we're not talking about no. reducing anymore. We're, we're, we're talking about moving, I, I just want to make sure I'm clear. It. We're talking about just the letting the liquor commissioner say this was sold. We're not reducing license. We're giving no, it he's going to come to us as the liquor commissioner and and inform us that there's a sale of the business and the liquor license would be going to someone else. In which case, you know, we would not <coughs> be looking. Okay? Which we would not be looking to reduce it. He's just informing us that it's going to be new ownership. That's now, if the business is gone and it's been closed. And here, and, and we might not even be aware of it. The liquor commission becomes aware of it when it's not renewed, right, Jim? Right. I mean, you and I might, right. might, you might not necessarily be. So if one time we make a decision to reduce it, we might not. <coughs> yeah. What happens is there's usually a rush at the end of the year, right? You know, to pay the fee. The business going is yeah. January one. Yeah. That license okay. isn't renewed. Is void. It's they can't. They can serve. Orange crush and Cheetos, but they can't serve liquor. And and so um, you know we've had the deputies go out about that. Most of us all just remember what it says. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I just wanna I just wanna check. So if there is a new business that would like to open up somewhere and they're going through a permitting process to be built right now and then the next stage would be to go get a uh, liquor license would there be would we would we make one available how would that work well they would have the ability to come to the board to ask us to consider increasing the number of liquor licenses in that category uh, uh, they have to come, the board has to make the decision whether we're going to add a liquor license. Okay. So it's not like it's not like a business person couldn't come and request it. If, 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 if we made a determination we did not want to increase it, for whatever reason, and we would know that it was like we moving on. Uh, uh, and uh, so so they would so we, we have the ability or someone has to be has the ability the liquor commissioner has the ability to come and ask on behalf of a, a, of a, a constituent to increase the liquor license numbers in that category. Yeah, like we did twice since that amendment to your packet today. You've done that twice. They yes. come to us, and that's the right way to do it in conjunction with your office. <coughs> we brought it here legislatively. 
you've yeah. increased it? You know, the primary, one of the primary reasons for doing this is to have some transparency and having the public uh, have the ability to weigh in uh, on, a, a particular, on a license that may be going in their neighborhood. As it stands today, uh, if they already have a special use uh, or, uh, you know, they just, um, they just go apply for the liquor license, uh, this at least gives uh, some kind of process to the public. I think that makes it a little more transparent. We publish, you know, did they publish <coughs> uh, in conjunction with our office a notice in the paper. That isn't a full-blown public hearing like Correct. we have for a rezoning or a special use okay. where you have notice, you have a hearing take public comment. They could comment, but it, it's it's not the same process. And, and we do have special event type liquor licenses that are available to folks for special events. Uh, how many of those do we have? Uh, we even limit it. Yeah, uh, there's, you know, for uh, a number of those kinds of special temporary that's in conjunction with, if they have an existing license, they can do that and there's, you know, um, in one category, there's a limit of six a year, and then uh, for others, uh, uh, like not-for-profits, et cetera, uh, there's not a limit per se. It's in the discretion of the Liquor Commission. Correct. And those are like one-day events. Yeah, like the Frankfurt Wine Fest, or right. you know, we have a number of, yeah. Manhattan has uh, an event, the uh, Rodeo has them. Yeah, there's a number of them all across the county. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, Kurt, I know you uh, uh, Go ahead. Annette. Oh, Annette. so what's the process then if it's an existing business and they want a liquor license? Are they still going to go get apply for special use? It's an first, existing and then business. They have to have a special use if it's in the. Right. You mean an existing business doesn't have liquor? Right. They have okay. to go get a special use. So they're going to pay for a special use and then come to us and ask for. Well, they. Well, that's what I'm talking about. That's 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 why I'm going to have Kurt talk here in a second. Yes. That, that's you know I think it's you know, uh, what just happened last month is it, right. They they went and asked for a special use permit. Uh, 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 or applied for a special use permit. You know I'm sure that applicant had a reasonable expectation to think. There's a license available, and I will get it. Right. You know, uh, which I think puts this board in a difficult position. Uh, 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 so I'd rather let them know there is a no license available, or you have you should wait until we're going to make a determination whether we're going to reduce the number of licenses. Yeah. You know, we got stretches in this county, and I think my, probably more my, my, my uh, uh, district, that you have a half a dozen licenses within a block. You know, and, uh, and the majority of them being uh, on-site liquor consumption. You know, is it really, you know, is that what we want? Is that how we would plan? If one of those licenses became available, I would strongly uh, suggest that we reduce the number of licenses because there's really not a need and it does not serve the public. And, uh, you know, and these are the places that stay open until 3 o'clock in the morning always. And Do we have sort of like historic anomalies have gone back? How long have those licenses been out there? I mean, They've been out there forever. A long time. But that's what I'm saying. I mean, some of them are out there. We've issued some additional ones along there, primarily package liquors. But we've, we've, we've uh, you know, you have uh, uh, three package liquor establishments within, I don't know, 500 feet of each other? I mean, I, I mean, does that really serve the community? I don't know. You know, we, get, we may have some real heavy drinkers in my neighborhood. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so uh, so I didn't want Kurt because Kurt didn't make he did have a, a brief discussion with me with some thoughts that he had. Uh, Kurt, well, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to say that right now, under existing scenarios, if somebody goes through the door of the liquor commissioner first. 
they of course advise them before they can even consider issuing a license. They, among many other things, have to receive assurance that the applicant has the proper zoning. So then they would trot down to us. Sometimes, more rarely I think, the person comes through the door first to us and says, I'm interested in opening a business that would involve liquor. We tell them about the special <coughs> use process, but I want to assure you that we tell them, you better get down to the liquor commissioner and learn about that process and find out about availability. We don't presume to tell them about availability or the likelihood or lack of likelihood that they'll be able to get a license. We say go down and talk to the office that deals with that subject. Assure yourself that given all the information that you've been provided, whether you think it is in your sound business interest to proceed with the special use permit. Now, under the types of changes that you're discussing uh, here, uh, we could be even more emphatic about that, so that when they come to us, if they for some reason hadn't been, made a stop at the liquor commissioner first, we could say, my friend, I can't prevent you from plopping down your $2,500 <coughs> to speak, uh, seek a special use, but really, it is not prudent until you go down and go through the liquor commission process and the related border process to absolutely assure yourself that you've got that permit in hand before you have the time and expense and uncertain outcome of the special use process. I guess the uh, only other thing I'd say under existing scenarios, if that individual um, s decides to go ahead and pursue the special use and obtains it, like any other special use permit, uh, if they haven't done all things necessary to implement the use that has been authorized by the special use permit within one calendar year from its being granted by the board, then that special use lapses. So of course that person would have wanted to be about the business of getting their liquor permit in the meantime, but if they fail to do it, then their special use is likewise null. So I think we, we, we basically have an understanding here. Can you just have to inform anybody that you, you have to go, go to the board, inform them of either there's a license uh, that's no longer in use and whether they want to reduce it, or of course if there's no license available, then you would have to uh, inform the board that someone would like us to consider increasing the number of liquor licenses in a particular category. We've got that says that. Uh, a good example, because I want to call it a test case, which the Rock was established must have been, you know, previously in our jurisdiction. So uh, when we get that final paperwork from the city of Lockport, we'll forward it to your chief of staff, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll deal with it from, you know, from a legislative perspective and uh, go from there. Okay, real good. And then we'll formalize it in the ordinance. Jim, can we get an electronic copy? So, <coughs> I was looking. I didn't see it. Hey, Jim. Yes, Mike. Oh, no. This is probably a discussion for a different day. I'm on the whole with the definition. This is probably a discussion for a different day, but as, as, as we look at the liquor ordinance, is there a possibility that uh, for future liquor, liquor licenses we can uh, add a video security component so that they'd be required to have video? Help for so many days. We can help the sheriff's department if there's issues. I mean, we can either set a date that everybody would have to comply by, or at least for new licenses. I, I do know that it was, it, it, you know, you, you would have to and be cited for package liquor, you had to be a clear site end for the building, and so forth. You just couldn't block everything off. I don't know how practical it is. Sometimes that's real practical. But I think what Mike's talking about is mandating video. I, 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 I have a number from Hammond. We don't have that as mandatory in our ordinance. Um, uh, I don't know what the percentage that do or don't, but a lot of them do. How well it works, uh, you know, is, is based on each individual establishment, but it's not mandatory in our ordinance. Right. Okay. Well, well I, I, I would say that it's probably a good idea. Uh, so how do we, let's look at how we would put that in the ordinance. And actually, I'd like to even see if we can retroactively uh, uh, tell current 
uh, license holders that they, 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 they have to license comply to by uh, 2020 or something. If we can, everybody if we gets can. a new license every year, so you can yeah. add it to the ordinance as part of the thing. Well, we yeah, let people pay, you know, a half of the uh, the fee so, if they wish. Yeah, you can pay it to install. But but the, the licenses all start in January one. That's right. Yeah. 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 Can we look at that? There's no automatic renewal. Yeah, we could take a look at it and make sure there's nothing in the you get a certain compliance date by a certain sure. date, but we it's also have to look that there's a certain policy. Sure. No, we'll, we'll look into it. <coughs> Mr. Bob? We would uh, like to see that because most municipalities now have it in their ordinance that they have to have a certain uh, megapixel. They have to keep the video for a certain amount of days. Uh, helps us prosecute uh, some of these cases. Obviously, when we go there, sometimes there's video. If it's beneficial for them, I'm not saying that that's always the case, but if it's not beneficial for them, there's no video it's involved. So. Don't be picking up our tenders off to the that would, <laughs> Guarantee that would not happen. <laughs> I'm, only so. I'm only kidding because there's a case that, you know, was clear that somebody was being abusive of their, their authority. Well, as you know, the package stores, you know, they're more prone to robbery. Yep. Uh, the other places were more prone to violent, aggravated batteries shootings, etc. So we would like uh, something in the ordinance that shows the inside of the bar and also the parking lot. And we've got model ordinances from other municipalities that have done the same thing. And I will tell you about it, your query. In some of these bars, there's a lot of outside influence. These are not local people hanging out there. Right. And as you know, our bars are open a little later, so when the other bars around the area is closed, show up, yeah. everybody shows up at our Which is another, another thing I, I believe that no, actually, it, uh, we go to three o'clock in the morning, correct? Four o'clock on Friday and Saturday. Four yeah, o'clock on yeah. the there's, 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 there's a special like add-on for four an extended an hour. Do we have anybody that comes to four o'clock? Oh yeah, absolutely. We do. I think. It's I think we should take a look at that too. I think that this is my trouble. I believe it's an H permit that they have to have for that, or some type of certain permit. That, that's another question I would ask then. If we wanted to change, say to say, two o'clock. You know, most municipalities, uh, can, I, can I have, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm losing, I'm losing them. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I would like to see if we could, could we consider we cut those times back to say two? Most municipalities are like, Midnight, maybe one o'clock on Friday and Saturday. Knowing some of these folks, that's one of their big hours of time to stay out of the line. Folks that work in the other restaurants and bars over there. Yeah. Is that who you think showed up? I'll take you into some of these bars and you tell me about who's showing up. Okay. okay. This is the world is it made uh, it's not your view. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good afternoon. Yeah. Keep them open. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move this along. I know. Good afternoon. Yes. Yeah. May I? Really, I need everybody to be quiet. Um, I don't mind anybody knowing a record. I am not a proponent of alcohol. However, as long as this, this discussion go on, I think about starting. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Harvey, Mr. Mr. Harvey, I would like you to know that even though I'm not a proponent of alcohol, I am a proponent of fairness. And I think any issue coming for this legislative body, regardless how I feel about it, should be dealt with fairly. And I think that we should, Mr. Chairman, go back to the ordinance, the language in the ordinance, so that if anybody come in my district and ask for my support for the liquor license, I'd rather have a language to tell them why, why not I can support you. And that language in that ordinance and, and, and this discussion went on today is what I'd rather use to, uh, not to tell them I'm not for their business, but to explain to them that I have a written ordinance right here in front of me. Why, why not you should have additional license in my district and or in Will County. So I think we ought to, and I think Mr. Benefield alluded to that, that we should go back and revisit that language in that ordinance. Okay, well, we'll move on. We, 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 you know, we'll revisit this maybe in Maybe next month, maybe two months from now, give folks time to work on how we may want to amend the ordinance. Does that sound good? 
Okay. Thanks, everybody. Some samples next time, too. I'm not a discoverer. Get you some jello. Go to Kate. I'm just interested in jello. I'm going to do business. Uh, public safety, you know, I'm, I'm uh, bad, this is something, maybe you should come out up here. Mm -hmm. You can stay there, we can hear what I'm going to say, and just make a determination when you want to come up with that. Uh, you know, uh, you're, co you're coming along on a uh, public safety complex or a sheriff's facility, and of course it's also a uh, uh, big center. Uh, and we have to make a determination on who's going to maintain this building. Now, from my perspective, uh, uh, it, it is a it's a county building. I, I I think the county should maintain the building. I know the sheriff has maintained the uh, prior to this that the sheriff staff maintained it. But because we're trying to centralize maintenance, because we're going to have a maintenance facility manager that's going to work with everybody, uh, uh, I would like to see it come under the county county. I don't, I don't know, and I did ask Mary to see if there's any statutorial uh, language that says the sheriff will maintain, it's like the, 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 the courthouse says the sheriff will maintain the courthouse, but the sheriff says, well, no, no, I'm going to use the county staff to maintain. Uh, you know, we're getting to that point that we need to start making these decisions so we can start putting things in place. So I'm bringing it up now. Yeah, you know, the sheriff will always probably do, will maintain, always maintain the jail because it's a whole different scenario. Uh, uh, but outside of those buildings, they, uh, buildings like the uh, jail, I do, I do think it should come under uh, centralized maintenance. It, it has, uh, have you given it any thought? Or we started discussing, when you say maintenance, are you talking about the daily janitorial? Are you talking about the, like, HVAC equipment? And not necessarily the janitorial part, even though I think it should talk more than one, but, but not necessarily the janitorial, I'm talking about the actual maintenance of the building. Uh, you know, whether it's the you know, HVAC system or whether it's, you know, uh, you know, roof, you know, you know roof, or, or, you know, it's routinely maintenance, whatever that may be, in relation to the physical plant of the building. Would you uh, like us to have a discussion all yeah. time about this? Would I think like, that we like it probably, yeah. probably it would be over in Capitol, uh, but it doesn't mean that we, uh, 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 I think you should talk with, uh, with people like Jack <coughs> and maybe uh, the folks who actually, uh, you may want to have a discussion with the executive's office uh, and, and of course Capitol and maybe let's formulate a uh, or, or make a decision. Quite frankly, I think it would be, uh, and this isn't a criticism of the Sheriff's Department, it's just where, where's, where's the Sheriff's Department focus in? And, and certainly, uh, there was aspects of the current building you know, where maintenance uh, was not, uh, uh, became a little, I don't want to say lax, but things were missed. And, it wasn't as, as a routine and a strict maintenance regimen mm -hmm. as probably we all would have wanted to see. Uh, 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 and the higher duplication of people who can do it properly is just not a very efficient way of uh, using the taxpayer's money. So, uh, I said the janitorial part, I, I'm not only concerned about that, the folks that come in and clean floors and the bathrooms and dust and, you know, but uh, uh, if, a, if a door needed to be replaced or a wall needed to be moved or whatever, central maintenance would, would <coughs> do that function. So, uh, and we have been heading towards that. You know, we, I think we've made some progress uh, with that. So, uh, welcome to the discussion. Okay. <laughs> you know, kind of Jim's point, I mean, we have been having a discussion about standardizing maintenance across all buildings, um, even coming up with uh, checkoff lists as we're building these new buildings on what kind of things we need to make sure they're in a regular maintenance process. So 
I think it just makes sense. Uh, it's going to reduce uh, unneeded expenses, keep something on a regular basis so that it's a proactive maintenance versus a reactive maintenance to the system. So, Unfortunately, the first year is under warranty. So. That's a good thing. <coughs> so we have a year to talk it's about what you Bob? No, <laughs> with somebody, with the, but when we bring out a facility manager, he's going to have to handle it. He should be handling all that. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I just wanted to point that out. It's like, well, we won't have to, we can just make a call and, you know, it's not, it's not that simple. It's not like calling for your home air conditioner, you know, so. And, and quite honestly, I think the sheriff's department should focus on, you know, what their charge was doing. And that's not maintaining buildings. It's, you know, making uh, public safety their priority and focus. So, uh, I have a question. Go, go ahead. Um, is that, are you talking just with the sheriff or so? Are you talking to ETSB and the call center and everything? Or are you just talking? To, I mean, are you talking, talking about, about the whole, whole building? Center? The whole building. The whole building. Yeah, it's the to maintain the courthouse. I might also point out that there was a time when the sheriff didn't maintain, didn't maintain the jail. It was the public building commission that did that. And, uh, uh, but of course, the sheriff hired all the folks. It was, you know, and that was because there was bonds on that. And, 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 uh, uh, public building commission has, has an obligation to maintain it uh, to the bond holders. Uh, so, uh, so if you wanted to, if you wanted to expand the discussion to include the jail, which may not be a bad idea from a high level maintenance. I'm not talking about people who actually go do the work, but from a high level maintenance, including that jail in our, in our uh, new system, uh, that should be also part of the discussion because the part of that system will then tell you, they'll send a memo over and say, by the way, you have to change uh, uh, these lights within the next week or whatever. So well, I know our current uh, supervisor that we hired is actually putting the schedule together because we, we don't want to come to you and say, you know, our hot water heater went off. So he's actually going through and seeing how old uh, a lot of these pieces of equipment are. And I can tell you that he saved the county uh, a whole substantial amount of money, I mean, just by redoing. Uh, but, but your but your but your maintenance, Bob, would work with the maintenance facility manager. He wouldn't be eliminated. Sure. You just have to understand it's a very high level. How it works, understandable. You know, so and and then it's included into the track, it's software. included into the in, into all the the system or the software or the programming. Uh, certainly, the jail should be part of that. Okay. You know, even, even if it's like I say, even if it goes from the facilities manager to your to your uh, uh, maintenance manager. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, all right. I'll get with Dave Tack and we'll. Try to get some uh, board yeah. members on board and get some meetings as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, if you, at least when we talk with them, you'll you'll have an understanding of a better understanding of, than I'm um, giving you here sure. how it would work. Okay. So, all right. All right. That's what and, and you know, Bob, we're 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 getting to the wire, so you know, we need to start making these decisions. Uh, that facility they ain't gonna be in there by the end of the year. So, Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Hey, Bob, as you're here, <laughs> I want you to stay here one more time. Uh, <coughs> transition moving team uh, for the public safety. Now, I, I know we're, all the furniture and uh, so forth is, is, is uh, going to be new. It'll be in but you But you are going to have to uh, move uh, whatever you need to move files and so forth. So uh, I've had a couple actually discussions, one with Mike, because he's kind of in this business a little bit. And uh, you know, he said, well, we, maybe we should have a maintenance uh, move manager. All they're doing is putting how we're going to move. They're not picking up the, the files and carrying it over. Uh, so they kind of lay out a plan on how to move. 
And then I had another discussion, actually, uh, with a staff member who said, well, we have a, we have a moving company that uh, works in certain county clerk's office. Uh, that's been pretty well vetted and so forth. And I just bring that up because we can maybe talk with them or talk to Nancy and see how they work. We're going to have to go through a whole process if we're getting short on time. So I would, uh, and, and David, you can chime in here also. I, I, I think the uh, our committee would like to start putting plans together for the move. Uh, I don't know what you need to move, but you know, but a, a moving manager would could help assist in the planning of the move, which probably should start taking place now. I was uh, going to have a meeting today in a little while here. Actually, Leopardo was helping us with that. We're, we're going to have to do this in stages, obviously, because it's not just the uh, files and stuff that we're talking right, about. I know we have issues with the telephone service and also computers. So our biggest move at Laraway is going to be our evidence section. All Nobody's going to touch that but our evidence text just because of the chain of custody. So other than that, um, well, here again, I'm not talking about the actual physical moving of the. I'm just talking about somebody who comes in who, who helps you plan and stages. And that's exactly what you're saying. At this point, this would come over. This go. You know, they work with you on the on the overall strategy of. of of how things get moved. <coughs> so, so it's a moving plan. It's not the actual physical moving. So okay. is that what you're saying? We, we're we're sitting talking? down today with Leopard and they wanted us to formulate that and go in stages because obviously we have the bank building and we also have the other way. So Leopard wants you to do it. What I'm saying is is you should have somebody who professionally does this that helps you put the plan together. I have no problem taking anything off my plate. <laughs> I mean, when the plan, well, you'd have to work with it, but when the plan is done. Yeah, you, you have to set yeah. up, you have to set up a Gantt chart with exactly what's happening when. If the phones are set up with the desk isn't in place, where do you put the phone? So someone has to coordinate all of that and then make sure all of the players end up in the right place at the right time. I think Good. after today's meeting, you may answer some of these questions and you may have a better understanding of where you need to be and where you need to go. You know, they may have, the apartment may have a portion of their services, maybe part of the move manager almost built in. Because so. they, they presented that originally. There is a, there is a separate charge. Okay. Well, let's see and what, and what and happens. And maybe they're the ones to use. I don't know. Maybe we should. Because they may come up yeah. with a plan as a result yeah. of these yeah. meetings. Today's, today will be an internal meeting. We've been having key meetings, obviously, and we're going to have a move meeting. We already started the move meeting uh, with Dave. Um, is this Dave part of that? Okay. Right, so I don't know if you want us to go a little further here. With, with I, I think, well, if we're going to have to amend Leopardo's contract, if we make a determination, we'd like to use their, their services, and we need to know that, too. Yeah. Right. Or, or we're going to look at coordination? No. But, I mean, if we wanted to get them involved in, into a deeper, more detailed level that was just being discussed, they probably have their hand up. Right well, now, overall coordination, it's, it, it's also important to understand that, that we have phased occupancy issues to deal with correct. as well. And, you know, uh, substantial completion, punch list, uh, acceptance, uh, beneficial occupancy, warranties, all of these things have to come into play. And, and there's a lot of moving parts, like you said, so well, what, it's complicated. Well, what, I mean, obviously, uh, you've already given us some thought and maybe a little discussion. So why don't you uh, uh, come back with some suggestions on move management or move planning, developing the plan, uh, the plan to move. And whether you need additional resources, whether you want to go out with our cube to look at some other companies, whether you think Leopardo can do it and you can amend their contract. Uh, but uh, what I want is like you, you can hand it to me and I can go, oh, okay, so this is what you're doing today. This is what moves on, on you know, uh, December 1st, whatever, you know, you know what I'm saying? 
publicly start it up and I show it to the chairman of capital and he can share it with everyone here and see if you guys are comfortable with that? That's fine. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. All right. Thanks. Okay. Uh, you know, there will be a committee of the whole on May, May 11th, community five and four to the this meeting, uh, and we're going to get an update on the judicial, and we're, we're going to look at some uh, uh, other items uh, uh, that we may want to put back in the project. I, I want to explain one thing. You know, sometimes I think people get the, the, uh, they misinterpret uh, what we may have done uh, with budget. When we establish a budget of $195 million, what we're saying to the architects and the engineers and so forth is we want to know what we get for $195 million. And they give us that. But they will also say there's certain things that you may want to consider. We took, we've taken these items out of the project to meet your budget. But there could be, and I think they will be presenting, uh, items that they feel should be back in the project or back in the budget because long term uh, it's less expensive. Uh, I like to use the example of it's like buying the, the, the you know, the five year air conditioning unit for your house uh, or the 10 year unit, you know. If you have to reduce things in, you're going to have to come back in and perhaps replace it in five years. Well, that's not necessarily the least expensive thing to, uh, least expensive way to go forward. So they will be presenting uh, at this committee of the whole uh, of what they feel we may want to consider uh, putting back into the budget because it would be the prudent thing to do in the life cost of the building. So we will be hearing some of that too. So, uh, uh, but the, and the reason I bring it up is, is I've been through this uh, numerous times uh, in my uh, service here at the county. Uh, and we drive a project to a budget because we want to see what we get. You know, when we did the jail expansion, for example, we set, set a $50 million budget. The project was closer to $68 million, but we also added 40% more, more capacity to the building. So there was a lot of scale to, to doing that now. Uh, and we did that through alternates, just like we're doing with this project. You know, the build out of the eighth and ninth floor will be an alternate. But it increases the capacity considerably. You add 10 more courtrooms, for example, uh, which means you probably never have to touch that main courthouse again. So I just kind of want to put that off there. Because uh, what I don't want to hear is, oh, you went over budget. No, we asked them what we get for $195 million. And then we'll make we'll have uh, uh, other decisions to make from there. So. Uh, so hopefully everyone would get there, and I, would, and I wanted to make sure that the <coughs> entire board was brought up to date, and the entire board could be see what the capital committee will be considering going forward, and of course that lets everybody weigh in what they think may be important for the project. So, uh, so hopefully everyone will be able to come to the force reserve and then stay uh, and listen to this. So. I think it'll take a good, it'll, it'll take probably about, uh, I'm thinking maybe an hour and a half, uh, depending on the discussion, so, all right? Uh, <coughs> we also, at the, at the, uh, uh, at the uh, uh, capital committee, uh, there was discussion on, on the old courthouse. Uh, after seeing the numbers, I think uh, repurposing uh, that building probably just doesn't make sense. Uh, you, 
you'd probably be looking at. But of course, it would make it basically a new building except the exterior walls. <laughs> but you're probably looking at a neighborhood of uh, 42 to $45 million to do that. So the kind of consensus was is, well, if we demolish the building and we redevelop the site, well, what, what would we do? How would we develop the site? And I think there was discussion that just to make it kind of really go through the whole list, I think the discussion was all the county administrative functions would go into this building, not everything would close. Uh, and and, and uh, 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 including uh, looking at bringing the health department building to that site also, which I think that makes uh, sense. It's a very nice location for you to get to by public transit. So, uh, but, uh, but in order to do that, we need to update uh, the white study, uh, which was done, I think, uh, seven years ago. Like seven years ago. So, and to reflect all the changes that have occurred from 27 to now. And there's, you know, we didn't own some of the properties we own. And there was a concept of having two campuses, and I think that's kind of gone to the wayside. So, uh, we'd like to give uh, your authorization to the county executive to start negotiating enough to update the white study with white and company. So uh, that's what would be the purpose of that uh, update would be. And they, need, they still need to work out on what the scope and so forth to be able to bring that back to the executive committee uh, eventually. Probably I'm thinking the next couple months. So, so I can entertain a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, committee assignments. Uh, I'll have a motion to uh, accept the committee, uh, place the committee assignments as presented. So a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I don't think I have anything else, but I'm going to flip through it anyway, in case I miss something. Yeah. This is that. Okay. Uh, is there anything I take to turn his opinion so that I don't even know if we have any other options? I don't think we have any other options. I don't think so either. So, okay. Uh, and then, uh, any public comments today? Any comments by the public? Any comments by uh, committee members? Any comments by county board members? Uh, okay. and, uh, the ability for the executive session. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. I guess you know. Aye. 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 Aye